totality of everything you will interact and collide with in the cosmos is targeted at one principal aim is to conform you to the way of this world is to conform you to, to bring you into a shape into a mode and I said earlier so that we keep things in perspective that the target of every kingdom is your soul your soul is the target that's, that's what they are coming for they know that let's leave the body if we affect the soul the state of your mind will if invariably eventually have impact on the outcome of your, your, your body your body will start obeying exactly what your soul has been shaped to so the target of every kingdom is your soul so they begin to first of all you are born into a space where lack, scarcity, deprivation is the normal for everybody inferiority complex is one of the first things that will become the outcome of your experience so your soul will take a shape that is not reflective of the mandate of dominion that you were given into time to come and fulfill and so you will begin to find out that you will be timid thing that communicates leadership that brings you to the spotlight you want to just be all by yourself you want to all be hide you know you will believe you are not good in anything because from day one from up from your upbringing you have always amen you've always opened your eyes to see that you are not good enough that inferiority complex will become a major stumbling block between your ability to fulfill what God has sent you into time to do because for you to be part of those that will be numbered as the righteous part of the posture you must sustain is you must be as bold as a lion so that when the commandments of God comes through you will not be a respecter of men but when you are a timid person, you are always looking at men. You will always, always falter in the commandment of God because men are more important in your eye and what they think about you is more important. And number three, you don't think that you are good enough. This one is a, is a soul sickness. It's a posture that is registered in the soul. What I'm driving at is mindset. As at this level, your mind is not set yet. You are still in between options. You are still fluctuating. Uh, maybe, maybe some days you watch one motivational clip on YouTube and they will say, tell yourself this, this. Then you look stand in front of the mirror and say, I am, I am this, I am that. Then you will now say, I know who I am. The spirits involved working daily on the shape of your soul, they know that your mind is not set yet. For something to be set, it means it has taken a form. So they know that from time to time you, you tell yourself that you are bold. You tell yourself I am a leader. You tell yourself I am not small. I am great. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. Then they bring another layer of disappointment, of failure. Another resistance to your dream. Another bad outcome. So that you go back and sink into your shell again. Then the person who said I am the head and not the tail. The spirits come whispering to you again. Guess what they are interested in? The shape of your soul. See, do you see now that no matter how much you try, you are actually not good enough? Then the person will start looking at his life and say, at this age, by this time, look at my mate. He is sinking carefully. The moment he embraces that school of thought, his mind becomes set on that matter. It becomes a mindset. This is how spirits are laboring to secure the reality of infirmity, sickness, to make being sick to become a norm as regarding what you entertain in your life. They continue to make you go from one symptom, one sign to another until you now come to a point where you forgot that God is a healer because you have tried many times. And then they come and whisper to you and say, now, but wait, didn't you pray? But see, let's tell us the truth. Are you still feeling the headache then you say yes and they say i have been to many miracle service and people who are truly sick didn't come out i observe they have come to a point where they say look let's stop this drama please 
was Apostle Michael Rogo that told us they went for a healing campaign somewhere in the far north and cripples refused to come. They said, no, please, that's They want your soul to take a, sh a ship. Apart from destroying your soul, that destruction is the inability to fulfill its purpose. When you destroy something, you have rendered it incapable of fulfilling the purpose why it was created. So the real purpose for the soul is to serve as an antenna to pick signals in between the two worlds so that your soul can bring sufficient spiritual illumination to the flesh. While you carry your body to move on earth, your soul can give intimate knowledge to your body as regarding matters that are happening in the world of spirits. But now, if they destroy, and you, you, you will have to participate for your soul to be destroyed, and the door you open is adultery. When that is done, they are, not, they are not satisfied yet. The next layer of encounter they want to bring you into is now to shape your soul into a mold. So when I look at people now, God bears me witness. I'm not looking at the color of your skin. I'm not looking at how fluent your English is. I don't care how intelligent you are physically. I'm not looking at how handsome or beautiful you are. I'm not looking at how blessed, how much you have. When I relate with you for five minutes, I am trying to identify what kind of mind is powering this body. I think it's Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, let this mind be in you. That is, the body of Jesus was at the mercy of his kind of mind. Everything that body Jesus did, it was the quality of the mind that was inside him. It was the mind that was inside him that was bringing everything that body. In fact, your body is helplessly at the mercy of your mind. And the soul is the seat. Your cognitive ability is actually domiciled around your soul. So if anything shapes your soul, your mindset, your mindset has been affected. That, that, that way you see your worldview, everything about you. There are many faulty mindsets sitting quietly in the hall. Many faulty belief systems. And Jesus will need to show us mercy this evening. Because he will allow the light of his word show you exactly who you are from the lens of his own perspective. I am loved. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the delight of the Lord. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. I carry God on my inside. Tell yourself these things. Every time inferiority complex depression you know how many people are coping with depression the average young man is battling it they have they have raised the bar so high they've raised the bar so high sometimes i shake hands with some of you especially my sisters i shake hands with some of you and i can i can literally perceive the the the, the depression the air of moodiness and gloominess that has encapsulated you it is like a cloud you carry around you. When I shake hands with you sometimes, just greeting you, I receive a portion, but I shake it off. Because the way, only way you will know those who are in this kingdom now is not how they dress. It's not how they are speaking. The only way you will know we who are kingdom citizens, it is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. These are the three parameters you will use to identify a citizen of this kingdom. Righteousness talks about our capacity to reveal the true nature of God and insist that we will not transgress his holy ordinance. Peace talks about the security a man has when he sees himself as God sees him. Joy in the Holy Ghost speaks about your capacity to be detached from situations, circumstances, needs and wants. Those things don't have the capacity to dictate your, your, your joy anymore. So joy is not the absence of challenge. No. We are joyful because we have a greater revelation. We are joyful because we have hope beyond this world. We are joyful because we have a consolation. There is something we continue to hold on to. It is that joy we have. Peace that the world cannot give. 
this is why we are peaceful this is why we carry ourselves with joy this is why we dress up and walk majestically not because we don't have so much on our shoulders to break us down we have choose to exhibit the nature of the kingdom righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost there are many bitter people many bitter people very bitter and bitter they just sit there in bitterness and that's why you cannot touch anything in the new creation reality because it is with joy that we draw from the well of salvation if satan removes joy from your life you don't have any fetcher you don't have any buga it, your buga is joy joy is what you fetch with this is the kingdom of god not small I'm not a failure I am not defeated tell yourself even this one I'm not a sinner because they are convincing you they are they they want every day to further shape your heart just accept that it is hard to live righteous once you accept it it's a mindset that's what they want they just want a posture in your heart to adopt that shape once it enters suddenly they say ah we have ah I am righteous. I am holy. I am pure. I am spotless. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sin has no dominion over me. Tell yourself these things. Get up in the morning in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the situations and circumstances. Let your first prayer point be thank you Jesus. Thank you. Nothing should take that joy from you. Thank you. I'm alive. Thank you, I'm awake. 